All right, then welcome everyone to a new video. Hope you guys are doing great as usual. In this video, we're going to be looking at the best perks for every single killer in DBD Mobile. I know there's a lot of content creators that probably did this on PC, but I'm going to be doing it for mobile because I haven't seen a single one yet. So I'm going to take it for the team once again and make one myself, especially I'm somebody experienced that has been here since beta and knows a lot about killers and survivors. So I can basically give a very strong opinion on what's good and what's pretty much bad. So yeah, in this video, I'm going to be giving my opinion on the best builds for every single killer. So yeah, let's begin. All right, so starting off with Trapper, I'm going to highly recommend you guys Pop Goes the Weasel, Save the Best for Last, Barbecue and Chili, and Corrupt Intervention. So the reason why I'm telling you guys to run this build is because, first of all, Corrupt Intervention is a very, very strong start of the match gen perk, and what it does, it blocks three gens at the start, and it allows you to not get gen rush straight away, because you know if survivors spawn together on a gen, they'll straight away work on it. But Corrupt Intervention buys you some time, so you have time to set up your traps, and when you're playing Trapper, you should always, always set up your traps first. So spend the first few minutes of the match just setting up the traps where you think the survivors would go to, but there's another reason why I don't really like Corrupt Intervention. If survivors with like Object of Obsession or some survivor runs towards you accidentally and he looks at where you're placing the traps, then you'll most likely be disarming your traps. So you have to be careful, you know, when placing the traps, you know, scout the area and make sure there's no one around because they'll most likely just keep on disarming your traps. So it's pretty much a waste of time and a waste of a perk of Corrupt Intervention. So it's the only negative and downside of Corrupt Intervention. Other than that, it's great, it buys you time. So yeah, I highly recommend it. Next up, we have Barbecue and Chili. Barbecue and Chili is sort of a mid end game pretty much perk and it allows you to, you know, see where the survivors are from a distance. So if you hook somebody, you'll be able to see if there's somebody working on a gen. And that's when Pop Goes Weasel comes in clutch as well because you see where people are, you go to that gen straight away and use Pop Goes Weasel to regress the gen. That's it. So yeah, pretty much you get gen bonuses and you will more than likely meet a survivor and you'll maybe kill him or hook him, you know. So it's very great value to have Barbecue and Chili and Pop Goes Weasel. And the fourth perk I highly recommend you guys to save the best for last. Very, very strong perk, which allows you to pretty much recover after hitting the survivors way much faster. So you don't waste much time pretty much wiping your blood. So you know what I mean? Like the stun animation uh, after hitting somebody and everything happens so fast. And it's very, very efficient because you're right behind them at all times and you can easily down somebody in seconds, you know. Save the best for last is one of the best trap perks out there. Highly recommend it probably wondering why is there like a, a row with three perks those are called the replacement perks that i made for this list if for example don't have a perk from the list that i gave you above i would highly recommend you replace the perks with whispers or thrilling tremors thrilling tremors will work as barbecue and chili as well you can even switch the two because they're both really strong and i highly highly recommend running thrilling tremors because after you pick up a survivor, all the gens get blocked, and if one gen doesn't get blocked, that means there's a survivor in there. So it sort of works as barbecue and chili as well, because you have so much knowledge of where the survivors are and what gens are not being worked on. It's pretty much a very, very clutch perk after picking somebody up, and buys you a lot of time as well. Obviously, there's a cooldown on it, so it's not as efficient as barbecue and chili, but it's very strong. And Whispers is there for you to scout areas and find survivors faster, you know, more efficient as well. Especially if it's a 1v1 situation at the end, it will very much benefit you and uh, guarantee you that it will be very, very clutch. So yeah, this is my list for Trapper. Let's move on to the next one. Alright, so Wraith. Wraith is one of the killers that is very dependent on add-ons. So when you're playing Wraith on red ranks at least, you always need add-ons because without add-ons, you might be very weak and you might not succeed as much as winning. So I highly recommend you running add-ons. You can run pretty much every single add-on. Most of his add-ons are extremely, extremely, extremely strong. For example, Bone Clapper, Windstorm, you know, they're extremely strong. So I highly recommend you running add-ons when playing Wraith. But obviously, you might get some weak teams at some point where perks will help you out. So let's begin. We've got Pop Goes the Weasel, which is extremely strong. Obviously, Wraith is one of the fastest killers when being cloaked. So when he's invisible, pretty much. And you can travel across the map so fast, you know, and you can just pop every single gen every time you hook somebody. So it's amazing. And you also have Barbecue and Chili to back you up. Next perk we have is Nurse's Cooling. Nurse's Cooling is extremely strong because when you're invisible or stealthy, you could say, you can see where survivors are if they're healing and stuff, so that's very good. They won't know that you're there, but you will be there, you know, and you can see them with Nurse's Calling, so that's a very, very strong perk on Wraith. One of the best perks actually on Wraith. So yeah, on the replacement perks, I put in Sloppy Butcher. If you don't have Barbecue and Chili, you can replace Barbecue and Chili with Sloppy. That will allow you to slow the game down a little bit because you have Nurses and you have Sloppy, so you can constantly, like, down people, injure people, you know, they have to heal for so long. It's extremely strong. You could also throw in Fnatophobia. I didn't put on this list because it's not as strong as these bags. So, I, you know, it's up to you. Preferences, if you have it, use it. Um, but yeah, if you don't have barbecue and chili, I would highly, highly recommend you running Thrilling Tremors. 
very, very strong perk as well. Like I said before, it works as barbecue and chili because you get so much information when picking Survivor up. So the downside of it is just that it has a cooldown, especially with Wraith, he's a very fast killer, so you know, Thrilling Tremors might not be the best because of the slow cooldown, but you know, it will still work if you don't have barbecue and chili. And the last perk that I got in here is Craft Intervention, again, just to buy you some time at the start of the match. Wraith is a fast killer, so he'll more than likely find a survivor very fast, and a lot of people generalize against Wraith, so you know, Craft Intervention is extremely strong because you need something to back you up at the start of the match. Alright, Spirit, the perk build that we have is Thrilling Tremors, Craft Intervention, Strider, and Pop Goes Weasel. So, we have Thrilling Tremors, again, sort of a replacement for Barbecue and Chili. The reason why I didn't put Barbecue and Chili for Thrilling Tremors is because you cannot see the survivor's auras. So, what Barbecue and Chili is, pretty much, it doesn't show you the auras when you're phasing, which is why Thrilling Tremors is way better than on Spirit. But, you know, if you don't have Thrilling Tremors and you have Barbecue and Chili, go ahead and replace those. Next up, we have Corrupt Intervention. Corrupt Intervention is, again, just to buy you some time at the start of the match because, obviously, you don't want to get Gen Rush and finish the game in two minutes. So, you know, Corrupt Intervention is very strong for that and buys you a lot of time, especially as Spirit. She's one of the strongest killers in the game. So, you'll more than likely win no matter what. Next perk we have is Trider. This is a very, very popular perk on Spirit because pretty much everybody runs Iron Ore at Red Ranks at some point. And you will need Strider if you're playing Spirit because you want to hear the survivors when you're phasing. Because it's one playing Spirit, it's sort of a mind game. It's like a 1v1. And it's, the survivor is always fighting to, you know, run away from you and stuff. But you as a Spirit, you have the advantage over the survivor if you have Strider. Because the iron will pretty much be useless. It will, They'll still be making noises and sounds and grunts of pain, you know. And yeah, man, iron will be useless for them. And Strider is like a very, very, very good counter for iron ore. I feel guilty saying this because I love Iron Ore, but Strider is pretty much one of the best Spirit perks out there. Last perk we have is Pop Goes Weasel because obviously Spirit travels fast, she knows where the gens are thanks to Thrilling of Tremors. So she can pretty much just pop all the gens all at all times, so it's a very very good perk for her as well. I put in Sloppy as well if you want to slow down the game if you don't have a single perk. The Plague, so the perks that we have for Plague is Infectious Fright, Monitor and Abuse, Craft Intervention and Pop Goes Weasel. I'm going to start from the top, so I'm not going to talk about the perks in order. I'm just going to start from the middle, so Craft Intervention. This perk is extremely strong on Plague because you have three gens that are blocked at the start of the match. And what it allows you to do with the Plague's ability is go around the other gens that are not blocked. And you can puke the gens and make the gens sick, you know. It'll pretty much have all the gens blocked and you don't waste much time because you have Craft Intervention. So Craft Intervention can be like very tactical the way you play Plague, of course. So, highly recommend that. If you don't have Corrupt Intervention, I would highly recommend Discordance as well. One of the top tier perks on Plague as well, because survivors will more than likely be doing gens alone. It gives you map information, and it's a very good perk for you at the beginning of the match, midway of the match, and end game. So, highly, highly recommend Discordance if you don't have Corrupt Intervention. But again, Corrupt Intervention is extremely good because it can make the gens sick, and you pretty much have everything blocked, and you get so much information that it's crazy. Next up, we have Infectious Fright. The reason why I put in Infectious Fright is because you guys know that. Plague has her ability, which is puke survivors, and she has the pools, you know. And since the recent updates that we've had on Plague, she now gets one automatic pool, so so she can like pretty much just down everyone at some point. And she's a very good slug killer because of her ability. So with her ability, you can like down everybody in seconds. And Infectious Fright will give you that information because what it does is once you down somebody, if there's any other survivors in the terror radius, they will just start screaming and you'll get a little icon that will show you where they are. So it's very, very strong. Yeah, man, Plague's one of them killers that can snowball the game so fast, go from a 0 to a 100. So Infectious Fright was one of the best perks for Plague as well because you can turn the game around so fast. This entire build is amazing because you also have monitor and abuse. I put it there so you can like sneak up on the survivors, you know, because the survivors will more than likely hear your heartbeat and start running away because they don't want to get sick pretty much. Because your goal as a killer is to make them sick, right? But, and with monitoring the abuse, you can just sneak up on them and just start sicking them pretty much. It's very, very strong. And again, Pop Goes Weasel is pretty much in every build because you just don't want to get gen rush. So you just pop every gen after hooking somebody. Helps you out a lot. Very strong, you know. You can, like this entire build is so tactical that you can literally win every single game of this build. And again, replacement perk, barbecue and chili. If you don't have anything, replace it with barbecue and chili to get map information, get advantage, to see where the survivors are on gens, you know, if you see them. And if you don't have discordance, you can run barbecue and chili as well. If you don't have corrupt intervention, run barbecue and chili as well because it gives you map information. And yeah, this is the build that I got for Plague. Alright, the pigs. So, we got save the best for last, monitor and abuse, 
barbecue and chili and pop goes weasel so yeah i put save the best for last at first because again it's one of the best perks that she has you can like down survivors in seconds and with the ambush attack you don't even lose your stacks if you use it on your obsession for example so pig is extremely strong with that and i highly recommend using save the best for last it's one of the best perks like i said on trapper very very strong on some killers and this is one of them killers that really works on obviously if the obsession is being so aggressive and she wants you to chase them it might be might not be the best but i recommend you just ignoring them and keep on playing the game until you get eight stacks and you'll just kill everybody you'll murder the entire lobby so i highly recommend you because you will be downing survivors in seconds they won't be able to do anything like you hit them and you're instantly already behind them again and you hit them again you know it's so good we have monitoring abuse very strong for stealth and to grabbing survivors obviously it's not the best for grabbing survivors but you get the point all right as a pig you always crouch at the start of the match because you want to be stealthy right but with minor turn abuse, you don't even have to be stealthy at any time because you'll sneak up on them no matter what. And obviously you might get a grab or two. Grabbing Savage gives you an amazing advantage. And you get pop out of it when hooking somebody. You get barbecue and chili. Again, map information, which is very strong and vital. Monitoring abuse for sneaking up on them. And yeah, for the replacement perks that we have is brutal strength. Because a lot of people are scared of pig. Because you can put traps on their heads, you know. They always drop pilots instantly because they want to be safe. They don't want to get down. They don't want that trap. They don't want none of that, you know, to waste time. So they just instantly drop pilots because they want to avoid getting hit. And with brutal strength, you can break pilots in seconds. Very strong as well and i highly recommend it so yeah but yeah you could also put enduring in this build i didn't put it on the list but you could put it because it works extremely well with brutal strength as well so yeah you're not you don't have to be scared of pilots anymore because you pretty much have the advantage by having enduring and brutal strength all right the last replacement perk i put in is corrupt intervention very strong perk you know at the start of the match what you can do survivors will most likely spawn together or spawn individually and they'll spawn next to these corrupted gens not next to a gen where they can work on next to these corrupted gens so they'll most likely start scouting the area to find another gen or they'll just walk towards you because you walk towards them right as a killer you always go towards the corrupted gens because they're most likely spawn in there and guess what they'll most likely walk towards you this time because you have corrupt intervention especially if you're stealthy by crouching so that's very strong as pig you know you get pretty much a free hit or free kill maybe at the start of the match just because they run towards you thanks to corrupt intervention so yeah, that's my recommendations for the pig let's move on all right the huntress so first of all i want to say that the huntress is one of the slowest killers in the game so you will need corrupt intervention pretty much to buy you time and so the survivors run towards you so you don't have to chase them you know they chase you pretty much by coming at you so that's why i put corrupt intervention as the first perk i put in nurses calling because you can obviously see where they are and you can throw hatches at them and they won't even know where you are for example imagine this in a cult in the cauldron farm you know and they're in the corn somewhere healing you'll see where they are but they won't see you and you'll have nurses calling and you can just throw a hatchet or you sneak up on them and kill them so a yeah, very very strong perk on huntress the nurses calling one and i highly recommend using it because it's very very efficient and you most likely get a kill with it when they're healing or something all right third perk that we have is one of the most popular perks out there barbecue and chili everybody runs this because you know where the survivors are some people go for the trick shots you know trying to no scope free the map you know do that all that stuff fancy stuff whatever so barbecue and chili is very strong for that you know where you know where the survivors are you can throw a hatch at them and if you get lucky nice you know if you don't have barbecue and chili go use the scordons because it gives the same pretty much information when people are in the gens so if you want to throw hatches at them and you somehow hit them you, you see the point it's very strong and if there's two survivors on the gen the scordons will let you know and you have a pretty much a chance of hitting one person but yeah if you don't have neither of those use frolling tremors it will help you out a lot in terms of giving you information on the gens and like I said, it's very strong, replaces barbecue and chili very well. Highly recommend it. So yeah, that, those are my free replacement perks if you don't have neither. Like I said, Huntress is very slow and she's dependent on hatchets. Maybe some add-ons as well to reloading and stuff. So you have Pop Goes the Weasel to pretty much back you up, you know, so you don't get gen rushed as fast because of her speed, you know. And you need something to back you up, which is why Pop Goes the Weasel is here to back her up on gens. I don't have much to say about Huntress because I'm not a Huntress main. I don't really play Huntress too much. And if you come to my streams, she's not even level 50 or anything. So yeah, this is just what I know from knowledge and by watching. And I play her a little bit and these do very well. So yeah, man, I'm not even complaining about it. So let's move on. All right, the nurse, one of the best killers in DBD Mobile and DBD in general. Uh, so yeah, let's begin. We have Pop Goes the Weasel because nurse can travel so fast and you can just kill survivors very fast. And you'll always be killing survivors because nurse is very strong in 1v1s. She can pretty much win every single chase and Pop Goes the Weasel. You'll pretty much always have Pop Goes the Weasel and you can just pop every single gen every time. It's extremely annoying for the survivors and I highly, highly recommend it. Next up we have is Infectious Fright. Again, one of the strongest perks for Nurse because it's a 1v1 perk. 
And if Infectious activates, you'll know where the survivors are around you. So you can pretty much slug and kill everybody in seconds. Because Infectious Fright just gives you the information where everybody is around the area. And if they scream and you get lucky that there's a lot of people in the area, you can pretty much finish the game in seconds, if not minutes, you know. Very strong perk, Infectious Fright, because you can slug win the game and that's it pretty much you're the winner next up we have is barbecue and chili one of the best perks for nurse because you can obviously hook somebody and then instantly go to the gen where the people are with the blinks of course because you travel extremely fast ac across the map and it's very strong on nurse to have barbecue and chili last perk we have craft intervention to buy you some time as usual because you need that time because any killer can get gen rushed the reality is the survivors have so much advantage in terms of toolboxes you know gen rushing and all that stuff so you might need Corrupt Intervention to back you up, which is why I put it on the list. But if you don't have it, of course, or any other perk, replace it with Sloppy to, you know, when they're injured, they have to heal. And they'll heal for longer and you'll buy a lot of time. If you don't have that, go with Thrilling Tremors. Again, works as barbecue and chili, so you can replace that. And it gives you information on the gens and it's extremely strong as well. And this is one of the best killers in the game, so you'll more than likely win no matter what perks you have. Even without perks, you can win with Ness, so I highly suggest it, you know. Obviously, Nurse is one of the hardest killers to play on mobile. Of course, on other platforms, it's one of the easiest ones, and it's the best killer, I believe. Um, but on mobile, it's hard to play as Nurse at first. But if you play her enough, you'll be one of the best ones, you know? Like, Nurse just requires skill of practice. So if you, the more you play, the better you get. And at some point, you won't even need these perks, you know? But these perks right here is what I recommend you running if you're an average player. Even if you just want to run perks anyways, you know? I run perks, you know? I'm chilling, you know? So run the perks if you want. And these are the perks I highly recommend it. And let's move on. All right, Michael Myers. So the first perk that we have is Corrupt Intervention. Very, very strong perk on him because at the start of the match, you're tier one. Pretty much means that you're the slowest thing ever and you're stealthy so you need something to back you up so you don't get gen rush because of how slow you are which is why corrupt intervention is there to help you out and i highly recommend it to you guys because you will more than likely get gen rushed or get one gen done in a second but if you have corrupt intervention you might prevent that and it's highly highly recommended to buy you some time next up we have monitor and abuse highly recommend the perk because you can sneak up on survivors and you guys know that michael myers has such a small terror radius with monitor interviews, you pretty much have no terror radius at all. So you can grab survivors, sneak up on them, jump scare them, do whatever you want with monitor interviews. You can have so much fun with it, you know. And I highly recommend it running on red ranks. It does really well and it's very, very popular as well. This entire build I'm showing you right now is extremely popular. So yeah, next up we have Save the Best for Lost. One of the best perks out there in the game and it works for Michael Myers as well. You, you obviously don't have an ability, a secondary ability where you can obviously not lose tax even if you hit your obsession somehow. Unless you're grabbing them or, you know, you you pick them up from a locker or something. I don't know. But Save the Best Floss doesn't matter. It'll work anyways because it, it's extremely strong. Especially if you're tier 3, Save the Best Floss will come in clutch. Because you probably will kill everybody in seconds. Because of how small the cooldown is of you hitting Survivor is. So, highly, highly recommend it. One of the best perks I also recommend you guys running. Last perk that we have is Pop Goes the Weasel. Again, I put it on so... You don't get gen rushed and you know michael is a slow kill at the start so you know you might need pop goes weasel to back you up and mid game end game is very strong as well so yeah, replacement perks i put in barbecue and chili again if you don't have any other perks put in barbecue and chili to get some advantage on the survivors to know where they are when hooking somebody but yeah another strong perk which is currently made on pc not on mobile because we just got demo so nobody plays surge at the moment but surge is one of the best perks at the moment because michael myers is like a killer that has so much action going on every time you don't you need, and you don't always have time to you know pop the gens so surge will do it for you so you could replace surge with pop goes the weasel and you know michael is slow at first so surge will do so much work for you where you don't even need to pop a gen because you'll pop automatically so i highly recommend it if you don't have pop or any other perk you know replace it and it'll do the job for you and from what i've seen it works extremely well it's so 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 worth it man so if you have surge use it because you just pretty much save so much time and michael is one of them killers that snowballs snowballs and snowballs every time you know and surge is just there to back you up and do the work for you so let's move on all right so here we have the legion so the first of all let's begin by talking about surge and pop goes weasel the two perks so the reason why i put them together and you might ask me why 
Well, you guys know that our red rank survivors pretty much never heal because they feel like healing is wasting time and it's true sort of. So they always go for the gen rush. So I got Surge to back me up whenever, you know, I'm in a chase or something. And if I down somebody, there's somebody waiting on a gen. Surge will activate and pop the gen for me. And if the survivor is smart, he'll get back on the gen and he'll carry on doing it. And that's when I hook somebody and I get my pop goes the weasel and uh, break the gen again. You know what I mean? I have so much, so much, so much advantage because I get double pop goes the weasel pretty much with Surge, which is extremely strong if you're getting gen rush. And you will be getting gen rush at red ranks because legion seems like one of the weakest killers people will never heal against him they just go for gens gens and gens so that's why i got two perks to back me up on that one i also got thrilling tremors to also help me out because if you don't have barbecue and chili you know you could use thrilling tremors but i would highly recommend thrilling tremors for this one first because legion is a fast killer and you can just travel across the map so fast and again, this build is based on gens and stuff because of him getting gen rush. So you don't even need barbecue and chili to see where the survivors are. You need to know where the gens are and which gens to pop and which gens are available for you to pop, you know, and what gens are being worked on. So you don't really need barbecue and chili to see where the survivors are because you just care about the gens, which is why we got Thrilling Tremors as a third perk. Last perk, which will make so much sense for you guys and probably wondering why, Enduring. So you guys know that survivors try to avoid getting hit by the Frenzy because they don't want to be mending and stuff like that. So they always pretty much drop pilots fast and you know as a legion you should never respect it to be honest You should always just go for the pilot hit and if you get stunned you get stunned That's why we got enduring in here So when you get stunned you recover fast and they can make a lot of distance if you don't have enduring But with enduring they won't make a distance at all so you can pretty much kill them no matter what And yeah man that's why we got enduring so you have less waste of time Next perks that we have is sloppy butcher and fanatophobia The reason why I got these two so you can replace them you know you can slow the game down a little bit and you guys know that survivors never heal, so Sloppy and Fanatophobia will pretty much be so, so, so long to heal. And they pretty much never heal, so you can pretty much win the game because they will not be bothered to heal at all. So you'll have Sloppy, Fanatophobia, and the Legion himself being annoying by men, like making them men every time. So it'll, it's just the way that you're going to win the game, you know. They'll just be on gens, but they won't even be able to be on gens because of how aggressive you're going to be by always hitting them, making them injured, by downing them, hooking them. And you'll just win the game so these perks right here are 100 win with legion because you got perks protecting your gen a perk giving you information which gens to go to every time because they'll be gen rushing you got enduring because if somebody loops you you can easily break the chase and you have sloppy infinitophobia to replace whatever you want with if you want to do like a infinite injured build something like that you know so they'll pretty much never be healing and you, you have to pretty much one hit every time for you so yeah that's pretty much it from legion Alright, by the time I'm recording this video, we did not get the Billy reworks, so I don't know if these perks will work after it, but I'm pretty sure it will because it's the same character, just different ability, you know, reworked ability, I guess. So first perk that we have is Corrupt Intervention. Again, slow down the game at the start of the match, and you can travel so fast, and Billy's one of the fastest killers when traveling across the map, so, you know, you can literally kill one survivor in seconds when spawning. So Corrupt Intervention will guide you where to go and where the survivors are. And you'll most likely get a kill instantly with the chainsaw. Next up, we have Barbecue and Chili and Pop. Again, when you hit somebody, you, get, you know where they are and you can travel and be there within seconds on that gen. You can pop the gen, kill the survivor. Pretty strong. Bill is one of the strongest killers in terms of like having map control. So that's why... This build works perfectly well. But Billy's weaknesses is windows, especially when you're chainsawing. Survivors always, you know, go for windows and you can't do anything about it other than just M1ing. And as Billy, M1ing wastes so much time because you can just M2 with a chainsaw. So yeah, man, that's why I recommend you running Bamboozle so they don't loop you, for example, on the shack for infinites because it can be an infinite at some point. So yeah, the, one of the replacement perks I got is Enduring. Enduring is very strong because you don't have to respect pilots. You don't have to be scared of pilots, you know. So yeah, if you're charging a chainsaw and you get stunned by a pilot, Enduring will help you out. And, and you'll still have the charge that you've left it on. So you can break the pilot with your chainsaw within seconds anyways. So Enduring is very, very strong and vital on Billy if you don't have any other perk. And I'll probably replace Enduring with Bamboozle at some point because it's just very strong. But yeah, Billy is also very good with Infectious Fright because he's one of the best slugging killers as well. So if you want to slug and you can't easily slug, he's like Nurse, you know. You can finish the game in seconds with Infectious. So if you're one of them people that are desperate for the win ASAP, use Infectious Fright as well. Replace it with what you want. And yeah, that's pretty much it for Billy. This is my best build for Billy and I highly recommend it to you guys. So the next killer we have is Hag. So we have Corrupt Intervention to slow the game down at the start of the match. We have Sloppy Butcher because you want to make survivors heal every time because you have nurses calling and if they're healing 
You can just sneak up on them with monitor and abuse, which is why this entire build works perfectly well together. So with monitor and abuse, you can sneak up on them because you'll be able to see them with Nurse's Cooling and they'll be healing for so long that you'll have enough time to see them because of Sloppy Butcher. If you don't have any of these perks, you can replace it with Pop Goes the Weasel or Save the Best for Last, which is also extremely strong. And Pop again, regresses the gens, very strong. Uh, Save the Best for Last also works perfectly well, like Michael Myers and Trapper and Pig, you know, you can just, you can pretty much just kill them ASAP, you know, but as Hag, you have cropped intervention at the start of the match as well to, you know, slow the game down, and so you have enough time to set up some traps, you know, because Hag is so similar to Trapper, you always spend some time at the start of the match, you know, just trapping some areas, like predict where the survivors would run to, so that's why I put cropped intervention as well, one, for my safety to buy more time, and two, so I can spend some time trapping some areas, you know, Especially with Save the Best for Last, uh, trapping is also very strong, you know, because you instantly kill them pretty much, or you'll hit them. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have for Hag. Not much to say because this entire build is very strong, not much to explain. You run it yourself, you'll see that it's extremely strong, and yeah, let's move on. Alright guys, next killer that we have is Ghostface, so we're going to begin by talking about Corrupt Intervention. So Corrupt Intervention, once again, just to slow the game down, and you know, you want the survivors to run towards you, something like Pig, you know, where you're stealthy crouching, you know, and you can just wait for the survivors to come towards you so that's what ghostface is also for so with corrupt intervention they will be forced to go towards you or find another gen so you can pretty much go towards the corrupted gens or go to another gen where that you would predict they would be which is why i put corrupt intervention as the first perk and it's very strong and you know and we also don't have the old ruin so corrupt intervention will pretty much you know help you out a lot so yeah we have nurses calling just to sneak up on them when they're healing and stuff very very strong we have barbecue and chili for again when you hook somebody you get that pop goes the weasel and it works together because you can go to the gen pop it again and you know kill the survivors and stuff you know where they are if you see somebody hiding in a locker you see them running towards the locker and hiding in there you can go there grab them because you're stealthy they won't know about it you know so you can just pretty much make so much use of it this whole build is so strategic and i highly recommend it so yeah for the replacement perks we have sloppy butcher which works 100 percent well with nurses cooling because again that means that they have to heal for longer and nurses cooling will be there for longer as well so you'll be able to see them at some point if you're just walking through the map and they're healing somewhere next to you you know very strong highly recommend it and yeah if you don't have barbecue and chili replace it with frilling tremors it's ghost faces perks so highly strong you know you don't have to buy anything else because you already have it works as the same as barbecue you know you get the information that you need regarding gens and who's working on which and in general it's just very strong so this is my build for ghostface let's move on to the next killer right next killer that we have guys is doctor so the first perk that i got is the scorters this is a very good perk but it's also a tactical one if you think about it so what we do with it is first of all the scorters is a perk where it activates when there's two survivors in one gen so the perk will activate and you'll see the gem being yellow and you'll be getting a lot of notifications. So, so that's pretty much it. So the reason why I have it in here instead of Corrupt Intervention or anything else is because you have your ability as a shock therapy, right? So what you can do with it is pretty much go next to the gen and use your shock therapy and make the greatest value of all time by being next to the gen where you saw it last, you know, being activated. So you pretty much make your shock therapy valuable because there's a lot of people in that area and you know that because of the scordons because it activated at some point. So you'll make a lot of value from it. Plus, it's just a very good, you know, informational perk, you know, it shows you where two survivors are if you don't know where they are, you know, pretty strong. All right, next up we have is Brutal Strength. In this game, survivors are pretty much scared to get hit sometimes, you know, and they know that Doctor is an anti-looping killer, so you can pretty much stop loops easily, and they always bridge up pallets. That's why we have Brutal Strength to break the pallets so fast, you know, because the survivors will more than likely panic, and they know that they won't be able to win the loop. And they'll just drop it instantly. So you will have brutal strength if you break the pallets fast and catch up to them. And by catching up, you'll also be having Save Best for Last, which is my next perk. Save Best for Last is extremely strong on Doctor. I know it might be sounding odd, you know, but it's actually really good, guys. Trust me. And because of brutal strength, with his ability and Save Best for Last, you will literally catch up to them and kill them within seconds, not minutes of looping. And just imagine how much you're going to be saving, you know, because on a normal loop without these perks, you'll probably be looping for minutes, you know. If the survivor is extremely strong but with this build right here if it's a strong survivor and you know what you're doing you can pretty much finish it in seconds you know because you have three strong things helping you brutal strength save the best for lost and this doctor's ability you know all right and the last perk that i got is pop goes the weasel again to prevent gen rushing because we don't have anything else to back us up so we have pop goes the weasel to help us out we have surge which you could replace for um and universe presence universe presence is good for small skill checks you know 
for you know a, just just making everything solid for the survivor highly recommend it you know making skill check small and we have surge so you don't waste much time you know when popping gens and it helps you out you know and if you don't have pop you can use surge but yeah other than that guys this build works pretty well i think odds has a similar build and i looked at one of his videos or his streams i believe and i saw him running this and he was extremely strong you know so i highly recommend this all right so next skill that we have is demo you guys know he's one of the cutest killers out there and um, yeah so the perk tool that we got for demo is saves best for loss which is the best perk for demo out there you can do so much because it all works 100 percent of the time even against your obsession if you use your shredding on them you don't lose any stacks so if you're at eight stacks with demo you pretty much you're you won the game you know if you have eight stacks with demo you just know it's over because they can't do anything you always be up their asses you always be killing them and there's nothing they can do about it, you know, because his best floss is extremely, extremely strong. And survivors can't counter it pretty much because it's just a killer thing, you know. So yeah, I highly recommend using Save Best Floss. It's a must perk on demo, guys. A must. But yeah, next up we have Corrupt Intervention to slow the game down again at the beginning. And it's a very strong one because it's sort of like Trapper and Hag. It allows you to set up portals, but instead of traps, you know, it's portals. And it's pretty strong because you can just go up to any gen, you know, not even next to the gen, like somewhere behind the gen to sneak up on them, you know, because when you come out of a portal, you have Insidious for like a few seconds. So, you know, having Corrupt Intervention will give you that ability to, you know, buy you some time and so you can set up some portal. And trust me, most of the survivors don't even waste time uh, breaking the portals because if you start shredding, you can see where they are, you know, it's pretty cool. So yeah, man, this is extremely, extremely strong. So best Blast and Corrupt Intervention. Then we have barbecue and chili this is a very strong perk as well because you set up your portals at the start of the match that means that you have pretty much a portal on every gen so if you use your barbecue and chili when hooking somebody you'll know where they are you can teleport in there kill them boom use your popcorn whistle boom you win so this entire build right here is the strongest build for demo and i highly highly recommend it if you don't have any of these perks i highly suggest you know switching it for infectious fright so you can slug because i said best for last very strong for slugging and if you don't have barbecue and chili, for example, you can just use Frilling Tremors. Again, so, sort of works for barbecue and chili if you don't have it. So yeah, highly recommend it. This works very well. I had so much success with it. I went mostly all my games with it. So I'm pretty sure you guys will do well with it as well. So yeah, use this build for demo. Alright, Clown. One of the weakest killers in the game, according to the community. But, you know, we have a build that works very well with it. So first of all, we have to save the best for last, you know, because it's extremely strong. And, you know, it can just kill survivors easily, especially if you throw a bottle at them, they will be extremely slowed. You'll probably kill them within seconds, you know, if you have save the best for loss, and especially eight stacks, you know. So very strong perk on Clown again. You guys should try it out. Highly recommend it. We have Surge and Pop Goes Weasel, something similar to Legion, because like I said, Clown and Legion are sort of similar because they, you don't want to waste time, you know. It's one of them killers that gets gen rushed all the time and that's why the community thinks they're trash but they have so much potential with surge and pop goes weasel because survivors will be always aggressive to gen rush because they want to escape you know but you don't want to let them do that so you have surge and pop goes weasel to prevent that and you know if you down somebody next to a gen the gen pops by itself because of surge and if the survivor comes back and taps it you know starts working on it again you have pop goes weasel again so you get double value it's so good and you buy so much time which is incredible you buy more minutes for you to win the game and less seconds for the survivors to escape you know so it's extremely 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 overpowered we also have discordance to control the map a little bit so you know where the survivors are and you know they will be always gen rushing which is why i put these three gen perks together surge discordance and pop so you prevent gen rush and you have so much control of the map which is nuts plus save the best for last you know it's gg dude but again if you don't have any of these perks i highly recommend you running corrupt intervention so again you slow down the game barbecue and chili to get map control like discordance you know um and yeah this is a very strong build so, tons of success with it highly recommend it odds uses it so if odds uses it guys i don't know why you shouldn't use it you know because i use it as well all right last skill that we have is baba tundi aka leatherface aka baba so first perk that we got is corrupt intervention again slow down the game Make the survivors come towards you because you have the chain so you kill them fast, easy. Monitor in the view so you can sneak up on them because you guys know survivors always start running away once they hear the heartbeat because they know they'll probably go down because of the chainsaw, you know, and you don't want that to happen. You don't want that to happen at all if you're a survivor, you know. So monitor in the views will help you sneak up on them. Highly recommend it. One of the strongest perks on Baba as well because of how much it can snowball the game again, you know. It can go from a 0 to 100 within seconds thanks to monitor in the view sneaking up on them. And again, you have Pop Goes the Weasel and Barbecue and Chili. So you get map control and you pop the gens and stuff. Very good, you know, basic build. But 
this is when it comes to the interesting one this is not the best build at all the best build with baba is actually play with food and nemesis but we don't have nemesis on dbd mobile right now and we're not going to be getting it anytime soon i believe so that's why i put this build and then i took off play with food and nemesis just because play with food is amazing with baba but it only works 100 percent of the time if you have nemesis you know it might work a little bit if you just have play with food but not the best of its potential so i wouldn't recommend you running play with food without nemesis so until we don't have like oni in the game where we have his teachable nemesis i wouldn't recommend you guys playing with play with food you know without nemesis so yeah use the build with corrupt intervention minor tin abuse barbecue and chili and pop you have so much map control you have literally control over the survivors gen control it's very strong and you most likely win yeah, that is it for the video guys thank you guys so much for watching the video i really, really appreciate you guys sticking around i don't know if somebody actually watched until the end probably not so i'm just talking to myself maybe at this point but it's okay um if you guys did enjoy the video and you actually hate listening to me please do drop a like and comment down below if you, what did you think of the builds you know comment down below what you want to watch next anything you want really and if you actually watch until the end comment down below i watch until the end because i'm curious to see who you are you know that legend and i replied to all the comments so if you guys want to comment anything at all i got you and yeah any questions feel free to comment drop a like if you guys enjoyed the video subscribe if you're new we need to hit 20k guys by 2020 please subscribe if you're new honestly that would mean the world to me but yeah i, I appreciate everybody watching i love you guys all and i'll see you all in the next video peace bye